Today is April 3rd, 2016, and we've just been having this uh, social meeting, been blessed abundantly, and we're going to be reading a little bit from Pamphlet 7 by Ellen White. It's called An Appeal to Our Churches in Behalf of Home Missionary Work. And we read the first couple paragraphs, maybe even a little bit more than that. I think we read the first three or so uh, last time. This is from uh, December 1896. So there's a number of headings within this, and each heading has a, you know, one, two, three, just a few paragraphs. Um, so the first heading was, it is the duty of the church to let its light shine, which we read last time. And I believe we also read dead in trespasses and sins. And she basically explained the problem with the church, how the church is inactive, not letting her light shine, but is instead dead in trespasses and sins, and is basically um, unmoved by the sweetest melodies that come from God through human lips, justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ, and how this is really the problem. Um, but in this testimony, she calls people to action. So the next heading here is on page five of the pamphlet, and the heading is, no one is to be an idler in the vineyard. So bless us, Heavenly Family, as we read this. Help us to really gain the blessing that you intend us to gain. Brethren and sisters who have long claimed to believe the truth, I would ask you, have your practices been in harmony with your light, with your privileges, with the opportunities granted of heaven? This is a serious question. And because she's saying this is a serious question, I'm going to read it again. Brethren and sisters who have long claimed to believe the truth, I would ask you, have your practices been in harmony with your light, with your privileges, with the opportunities granted of heaven? This is a serious question. Why is it there is so little faith, so little spiritual power? Why are there so few who bear the yoke and carry the burden of Christ? Why do persons have to be urged to take up their work for the Master? Mm. That's worth reading again. Why do persons have to be urged to take up their work for the Master? Why are there so few who can unveil the mysteries of redemption? Why is it that the imputed righteousness of Christ does not shine through his professed followers as a light to the world? The Son of Righteousness has risen upon the church, and it is the duty of the church to shine. Those who are connected with Christ will grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ to the full stature of men and women. It is the privilege of every soul to make advancement. No one is to be an idler in the vineyard. If all who claim to believe the truth had made the most of their opportunities and ability to learn all that they were privileged to learn, they would have become strong in Christ. No matter what may have been their occupation. If farmers, mechanics, teachers, or pastors, if they had wholly consecrated themselves to God, they would have been efficient agents to work 
for the Heavenly Master. Amen. So here, Ellen White is bringing out, uh, I just love how that first paragraph is just, you know, this was two paragraphs that we read. The first one was primarily occupied by questions. These are such important questions. Why do persons have to be urged to take up their work for the Master? Why so little faith? Why are there so few who bear the yoke and carry the burden of Christ? Why are there so few who can unveil the mysteries of redemption? And I love how she brings it to how every one of us has a work to do for the kingdom. No one is to be an idler in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. We all need to improve our opportunity. We all need to advance. We all need to let our light shine. No matter the occupation, farmers, mechanics, teachers, pastors, no matter what it is, if we had wholly consecrated ourselves to God, we would have been efficient agents to work for the Heavenly Master. So the fact that she's saying all of these things shows that that's what we can be doing. Amen. And that's what we should be doing. And why do persons have to be urged to take up their work for the Master? Well, unfortunately, that's been the case, that we have needed to be urged. It's an unnecessary necessity. It's only because of our hardness of heart that is, it has become a necessity. But now that we recognize and we can read these things and say, hey, wait, no, wait, there's no reason. I shouldn't have to have anyone urge me to take up the work. I shouldn't have to have anyone urge me because the love of Christ compels me because what our heavenly family does compels me mm. and seeing a lost and dying world arouses sympathy within me and compels me to go and to live out the life of Christ for their sake. The reality that we have around us every moment of every day is enough to urge us to take up the work of the Master. Yeah. And so let us do it. Branches, think about this. Our Heavenly Family has given us great light. Yeah. Such great light. And you know, for those of you who have been Davidians prior to accepting the branch message, you know that the Davidian message, as incredible as it is, does not prepare people to teach the world. It prepares people to warn the church. And most Davidians are entirely unprepared to teach the messages of truth to anyone other than Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. I myself was totally unprepared to witness to anyone other than a Seventh-day Adventist while being a Davidian because showing the different points, so on and so forth, everything depended on being able to illustrate things from the Bible and the writings of Ellen White but not exclusive of the, the writings of Ellen White. That was a necessary part in order to demonstrate certain things. I couldn't show something as being true just to someone who wasn't an Adventist, nor could I show something as being true to someone who didn't accept the Bible. But if we are to reach the world, we have to be able to demonstrate the truth on the grounds of truth on the most fundamental level, so that anyone, regardless of their preconceptions, has the greatest opportunity to hear and receive the truth. This message does indeed prepare us to do that work. This message prepares us to reach the world, the Thank whole you. world, including Seventh-day Adventists and Davidians and Branches, and Protestants and Catholics and Hindus and Jews and Muslims, you know, everyone. And they have shown us these things increasingly clearly. 
They show us more and more clearly all the time what great sin it would be more than in any prior generation to sit on the knowledge that we've been given and not seek to impart it to others. Everyone here has been called into ministry to serve others. You know, sure, we may have different callings of how we might go about that ministry, just like Ellen White said here, whether a farmer, a mechanic, a teacher, or whatever. But we are all called to be bearers of the glad tidings. And so let us do it. Amen. 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 No more amens? Okay, good. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's go to work. You know, what, what do we have to waste? Like, or what time do we have to waste? And what do we have to lose? Well, actually, we have everything to lose if we don't <laughs> go to work. If we do go to work for our Heavenly Family, the only things that we will lose are the things that are not for our benefit anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need to Amen. attempt much because we expect much, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen, absolutely. All right, well, um, if there are any more questions or comments on these things, feel free to mention it, and otherwise I think we should draw the meeting to a close. I just had one, one other quick testimony. I, it was... Um, in relation to uh, my father, my father's, um, you know, my parents are Catholic, and um, so his birthday was on, actually it was on the last new moon. I keep, I keep meaning to share this, I keep forgetting, but it was just so amazing, like the Heavenly Sister blew me away. Um, so it's his birthday. We are, I already went through the Christmas thing. I'm like, okay, we just don't want to celebrate Christmas and, you know, whatever. But we'll come to your house, of course. We did that, and, and that, they were fine. And uh, uh, we have a very nice time. Then, uh, for, so it's my dad's birthday. And so I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, Heavenly Sister, I, I know I can't send them something. I don't know what to do. So I decided, I was just praying, praying, praying. And um, I ended up writing them just a long letter, just telling them how it would be such, you know, that, that you know, just explaining the, the pagan birthday thing and, and how it would be such a dishonor for me to send him some clothes that he's never going to wear. He, do, he doesn't need anything from me, you know, but that, um, but that my honor and just, you know, the Heavenly Sister just helped me think of all the things um, that he has done to be an incredible example to me. Even as a Catholic, he's really stood up for his faith and has caused separation in his family. Because even in, you know, Catholics, there's, you know, really strict Catholics and then really liberal Catholics. And my dad is a very strict Catholic. And, you know, he taught me to stand up for your principles, even if your own family, you know, will be hurt by it, you know, and, and it's not really, um, so the Heavenly Sister, like, brought those times that he did that back to my memory so I could tell him that this was one of those times where I was going to do the same thing that he did. <laughs> and, um, and uh, you know what, I, I, I just, I sent it and I was like, oh. Um, and he, we ended up having the most beautiful He's in New York. He, he lives in New York, so we're not very close um, distance-wise. But he just sent back the most beautiful email, and then we talked to each other on the phone. And it was the most incredible day, the most incredible time of bonding, really by just, you know, because Satan just lies and say, oh, man, your dad is just going to hate you if you obey God. You know, if you obey the Heavenly Family, you know, and, and I might lose my parents, I might. But, um, and I've lost friends. I've lost plenty, you know, following God for sure. And my parents have too. But that um, usually that's just a lie, you know, that usually it just it makes the relationship, obeying God makes the relationship, any relationship really stronger and better for the most part, you know. And I just wanted to praise the Heavenly Family for that incredible, um, what, what I, I thought might be, you know, a detrimental thing to my parents and my relationship turned out to strengthen it a lot logarithmically so praise to the heavenly family amen that is so awesome Mm -hmm. thank you heavenly family Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's that so, encouraging, so encouraging, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Wonderful. All right. Well, on that note, uh, unless there's anything else, would someone like to volunteer to close with prayer? Well, I'd like to make a comment to that first, if you don't mind. You know, know, when I think of, you know, this message, this message is to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the fathers. And so that's why I see that taking place there, Mary. That is an awesome Mm -hmm. testimony. Thanks for sharing it with us. Yeah, thank you, Rebecca. Yeah, thank you. Amen. 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 So shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Family, we thank you for taking such good care of us. I thank you for uh, recipes I've been learning lately that are just so delicious and so simple and healthy too. We pray that we can discover something that will be a blessing to our world, like Abraham's promise to Abraham was that his seed would bless bless all the nations. Please bless us that we can, with your witty inventions, that we can bless our world and bring glory to your name. We thank you for your love most of all for us. In the name of the branch, he and she, father and mother, your children, we thank you for them so much. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Well, it's been a huge blessing, everyone. So Have a good night. Have a good night. Love good you night. all. Love you too. Good night. Good night. Love you all.